Welcome everybody to the Daily Intimacy. It's Tuesday, December 1st. I can't believe it's December. Wow. <laughs> 2020 is actually coming towards uh, a close, huh? So, um, it's re yeah, <laughs> you know, it's really nice to see you guys again. Um, I missed you last Tuesday. And, um, and then I was like, oh, I'm gonna like, feel like I'm having a party and you're all here. Um, so thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. Thank you in advance to Linda for being our guest today, dear friend of mine. Um, we will begin with a centering. So wherever you are, find yourself in a place where you can, um, if you're driving, then you're just going to heighten your awareness. But if you're in a place where you can, you know, sit down or lie down and close your eyes, uh, please feel free to do that. But either way, just take a nice deep breath. <sighs> Exhale, let's do that a couple of times. Breathing up from the base of your body up through the central channel. So right up the belly, up to the heart, and then we'll bring it right up to the third eye this morning. Um, so breathing in and up, really from the earth, from the belly, and then all the way up to the crown of your head or actually we're just going to the third eye this morning, through the heart to the third eye, and then exhale back down. So do that a couple of times on your own as you're beginning to settle in here. Now we'll focus on the exhalation a bit. So at the bottom of the exhalation, really, as we're releasing anything that doesn't need to be present with you this morning, we're going to, and you can do this because we, I, we can't hear you and I can't hear you, you're going to make a little sound at the bottom of the exhalation that sounds like, ha, huh, and give your belly a squeeze. So as you're breathing in, we're arriving, spirit, God, goddess, here I am. I'm present, I'm here. And then exhaling, I release all energy that's not mine that I don't need to hold on to. And whatever language works for you, I release what I don't need. I'm breathing in inspiration from the earth, arriving, gratitude, smile on your face. And then exhale, ah, at the bottom. Really give your belly a little squeeze, make that sound huh, to, to assist you in the release. And then again, breathing in up to the heart center and then to the third eye. And then exhale, releasing huh, at the bottom. Two more times, again, focusing on what you're bringing, that you're bringing yourself forward as you breathe in, greeting your day, smile on your face, and then exhale, I release. And then one more, one more moment just staying with you with you, between you and you. Just allow there to be an intention for today. That's what comes to me right now. And when I say allow, it's like, allow it to show up for you. Allow it, your heart to bring it for it forward. Maybe it's the next step on your path. Maybe it's just what you're intending to do today. And listen for whatever is showing up. And then you might take a moment to jot that down, but first have a breath and gently open your eyes and come on back. We've got our big group here. If you wanna scroll and say hi to people, just if you, um, one thing I see, there's a handful of um, new people here, which is really lovely. Uh, we'd like to have you have your video on, whether you are you know, still in your pajamas or just getting up, we really, 
um, appreciate the video on so that it feels, it just feels way more connecting for all of us and for me. <laughs> so even if you're walking or you're still in bed or you're getting your, you know, smooth morning smoothie ready, whatever it is, it's, uh, it's great to see you. It's great to see your, your, your face and whatever you're doing. Yeah. Like even if you're doing something and listening in, like that's okay. It's all good. So thank you, those of you that have checked in again. Um, thanks for sharing. And um, I do invite people to check in and say where they're from and, and on a scale of one to 10, how they're doing. And um, so if you haven't done that yet, feel free. It's good to see you guys back. Good to see you, Laura. Um, okay, so this morning we have a friend of mine and her kitty. Um, <laughs> my friend Linda Marks is here, and um, I've known Linda for a really long time, many, many, many years, more than more than 15 years, put it that way. Um, and we are currently in a women's group together, so we get to connect really, really often and really deeply. And I've been able to witness Linda... Um, She's a psychotherapist, body-oriented psychotherapist. However, I um, have got, I have had the pleasure to witness her really um, tapping in and honing her passion for music. And now she's like a recording artist and she's done all these shows and radio. And it's incredible. It's incredible. <laughs> Really, honestly, actually, I am someone who um, has done a lot of singing in my life and played a lot of musical instruments and music is a big part of my life. And so I'm, I'm like, especially impressed <laughs> with how you've really brought it forward and, and really um, made it such a huge part of your life. So we've got a mixture of things coming today. We've got um, some music, live music. We've got some body-oriented work around transforming pain into gold um, through Linda's like hallmark practice um, that she brings to the world and, and whatever else is going to show up. So grab a pen and, and paper or journal. If you don't have one, just we want you to have that nearby. We're really counting on a lot of sharing today. So there'll be some writing and some sharing like we usually do. Um, and of course, that you're at choice to share. Uh, you always can share in the chat, and we also love to hear your voices. So with that, I am going to turn it over to you, Linda. Thanks so much, Robin. It's a pleasure to be here. I want to um, introduce Grace. She's a rescue from Buddy Dog. She's also my music director. I've been doing um, two weekly live streams since the beginning of the pandemic, and on my Sunday night one, she usually jumps on the piano bench just like she, you saw and, and begins my show. So I guess she realized there was going to be music and here she is. It's a real pleasure to be here today. And I'm going to open and close with songs. As a heart-centered body psychotherapist and a singer-songwriter, all of my work was deeply anchored in the face-to-face -face world of what we could call the old normal in the pre-pandemic world. I work with the cardiac energy field and it is most strongly felt when people are eight to 10 feet from one another, which is something we haven't been able to do for a long time. My work also included touch. And as an actively performing musician, I played gigs three to five times a week, most often with some of my musical colleagues joining me. As a recording artist, uh, artist, I spent every Thursday in the recording studio with my sound engineer my musical colleagues would come through to record their instrumental parts for my arrangements. I had two albums to come out in 2020. And when the pandemic struck nearly nine months ago, everything about my work was changed in a heartbeat. First, I felt shock. Then I felt sadness. Then I felt a big black hole of not knowingness. My clients didn't want to work on Zoom when I couldn't touch them. All my gigs were canceled. My monthly group relied on people being able to incorporate touch in our healing work. My recording studio closed. Without knowing what would unfold, this pandemic has turned out to be one of the most creatively fruitful times in my life as a songwriter. I've written 18 songs so far, almost enough for two 2021 albums. And I'm gonna open this 
little workshop with a song I wrote as I asked myself the question, what can we create during the pandemic? It's called Monuments of Love. And just so you know, I'm gonna be going back and forth between the piano and my desktop because for the piano, I use my iPhone, but I can't see any of you on my iPhone and I can barely hear anyone. So when I play the music, I'll be here and afterwards I'll just walk over to the computer so I can see everyone. So this is Monuments of Love. Monuments of Love, and I'm going to move over to the computer. And I'll just take a moment to mute myself here. Thank you, Linda. That was beautiful. Hmm. I love being sung to. So this is Sebastian, he is up here too. I have actually five cats and a corgi and they're all healing angels. And if Sebastian walks on my keyboard and makes inappropriate sounds, it's just what he does if he knocks papers off my desk, but he's a Siberian and he's a sweetheart. So anyhow, <laughs> I wanted to talk a little bit about our pandemic context. Nine, nine months of pandemic life has left nobody untouched. The ways of life that anchored us and that were most likely things we took for granted are in many ways no longer possible. Sheltering at home in small pods, sometimes just you or your immediate family, working at home if you're lucky enough to have a job, many jobs lost and new jobs hard to find, 
limited traveling. Traveling now means leaving Massachusetts or New Hampshire, wherever you live and crossing the border and coming back, needing COVID tests to do that too. Visits with friends are so much more limited. Zoom holidays instead of traditional gatherings. For many people, food insecurity, housing insecurity, and financial insecurity, virtual schooling, telehealth visits, COVID-19 testing that can take over six hours based on what a client of mine experienced after trying for three days yesterday, loved ones dying or in hospitals without us being able to visit them. Our pandemic context has brought isolation, exhaustion, and an increase in anxiety and depression for many. What I'd like to do is invite you to do just a little bit of a meditation. So I invite you to close your eyes and take a few deep breaths. As you inhale, letting your chest and belly fill with air. As you exhale, letting your chest and belly relax. And just take a few moments to reflect on how your life has changed during this pandemic time. What has changed in your daily life? What has changed in the way you spend your time? What has changed in the way you're able to relate to others? So just taking a few moments to reflect on how your life has changed during this pandemic time and what stands out the most for you. And whenever you feel ready, I invite you to bring your focus back into the room and just take two minutes to make some notes on how your life has changed during this pandemic time and what's been most challenging and painful about pandemic living. Just about another half a minute. So I'd love to hear from a few of you about how has your life changed during this pandemic time and what's been most challenging and even most painful about pandemic living. So. So you can put me in the chat if you want to share, put ME in the chat and then you can unmute yourself. Okay, Richard. Richard. Great. Um, everybody hear me? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, for me, it's been <clears throat> a big change, um, in my emotional landscape for sure. Um, I think what I'm doing, I, I basically just, uh, took what I had been doing at home and just amplified it in, in a big way. Like a lot of, uh, I'm into board games, so I, I'm creating in that area on the computer and I'm collaborating with some people, uh, you know, over the computer and stuff. 
Um, but I think the biggest thing that changed for me was I just got really anxious and really fearful at the beginning. I never would have expected my, no, I never knew that was in me to, to get that uh, affected. Um, and a lot of crying. I just, it, so the, the two things, there's lots of anxiety and fear, and then a lot of crying it out and back and forth and back and forth. For a few months there, I was just doing that all the time. It was like, wow. So, and I think I've sort of, I'm getting a little more stable now, but the stability is more, feels kind of depressed now, kind of heavy. As we say in yoga, it's tamas. It's just very heavy and um, yeah, hard to, hard to move very much. So I, I still do my yoga and try to do some exercise, but yeah. And it's also that time of year, so. Um, but yeah, it's, um, I never yeah. would have expected all this, um, a lot of somatic feelings, tingling and energy and unpleasant. I mean, and, and of course, when I read my spiritual books, they say, just don't judge it. Don't judge it. That's been a real challenge for me, but uh, I'm trying. <laughs> yeah. But it's getting a little bit better every week, every month here, so. But I don't think I'll ever get used to this. Uh, a lot of the spiritual teachings say, just meet reality, meet reality. I don't know, maybe it'll take a decade, but a, hopefully it won't go on that long. But <laughs> well, Unfortunately, from right. everything I read, and I'm, I'm one of these people that tracks the data every day, it looks like we're gonna be like this through 2021. And it probably won't be 20 to, until 2022 that things are a whole lot different based on everything I'm reading. So, well, we'll see. We'll see. Let's not we'll say see. Uh, anything. Let's, go, let's, let's continue because Susan, Susan and Steve also put me in the chat. Yes, Sorry yes. And, after, um, and if other people want to share after Susan and Steve, please type into the chat because I'm going to move on to something else. But if you have something to share, please do enter it in the chat. So let's move on to Susan and, and then we'll move on to Steve. And then Steve. Yeah. Hi, everybody. So this year was the big, this was a real challenge for me because I'm pretty social and I've been like everybody else, kind of isolated. So this was the first Thanksgiving in my entire life that I spent all alone. None of my cousins were having, we usually have a big, huge gathering. None of us were getting together. On top of that, I was a little bit sick. I got a negative COVID test, but I was sick. So I had to stay put. And um, I, I just, that was a real challenge for me. I really like to be around people and connect. So, this pandemic has really put me to the test, but I'm uh, knock on wood, I'm surviving it. And I'm extremely grateful to Robin and other people who are, you know, coordinating these Zoom chats. So hang in there, everybody. I'm telling you all that to tell myself the same thing. Thank you, Susan. Thanks for sharing. Steve? Yeah, thank you for this forum. Uh, certainly calls like this have been super beneficial. And uh, in some ways have allowed me to connect with people that I would not have probably if the pandemic hadn't come about. So I guess I can say I am grateful for that. Um, what has changed? I've slowed down considerably in my entire life. I've practiced a lot of self-care. I've fallen in love with music again because I believe that there's great power and healing in that. Just not just performing, but listening and just creating. Um, and really looking at what is important in my life from a career, from a family perspective, those things have all, I guess, been afforded, you know, I've been afforded the time to do so. Um, just challenge wise, I would say the uncertainty of the future, which is always uncertain. However, the health of loved ones, you know, kind of falls into that category as well. So that's kind of, where I am today. And I mixed emotions too, similar to, to others. As far as Richard said, I mean, it's like a wave up and down. It's like, okay, this is scary. All right, we're going to get through this. Okay. It's back again. So. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for sharing Steve. And I also just want to acknowledge Sean who wrote in the, the chat as well. And if any of you at any point want to say anything, please do use the chat. Um, if we had a, I'm used to doing in-person workshops for long periods of time where there's room to go around a whole room and hear from everyone. 
So doing it on Zoom in an abbreviated for, forum, at least we have the chat so that if you have anything you want to say at any time, that's the way we can at least hear you. I wanted to talk a little bit about the power of the heart and emotional alchemy. The, the heart has the strongest electromagnetic field in the body. The electrical charge generated by the heart is 60 times that of the brain and the magnetic field generated by the heart is 5,000 times as powerful as that of the brain. When people are within eight to 10 feet of one another, our heart waves interact without words, but our heart waves can also be felt and make a difference at greater difference distances, even when we gather in virtual space like we're doing right now here on Zoom. As we become more emotionally grounded and embodied, we have the opportunity to learn to use this heart power for creative purposes. All our feelings have energy, whether we are sad, scared, angry, happy, joyful, fill in the blank. And as we learn to be present with our feelings, experiencing them emotionally at a body level, we open the door to a transformational kind of creative power, which is something I call emotional alchemy. To give you an idea of how harnessing our heart power might work, <clears throat> when I was a little girl, once during a science class, one of my teachers invited us to do an experiment with a prism, a piece of white paper, and the sun. She told us that if we could learn to angle the prism just right, we could actually bend the sunlight to burn a hole in the white paper. And when she first introduced the idea, I wasn't sure I believed her. As I tried really hard to figure out what the right angle was, Nothing happened for the very longest time, but I kept trying and trying. And eventually I tried an angle that produced a magical result. When I held the prism at that angle, sure enough, the sun's light started to burn a brown hole in the white paper. And after I burned the hole in my own piece of paper, I, I looked around the room and I saw that other people were finding the right angle as well. This exercise from grade school has become a great metaphor. Our heart power is like the sunlight and our consciousness is like the prism. If we learn how to go deep inside, feel our hearts emotionally and at a body level, we can learn to direct the heart energy to transform pain into gold and create new possibilities that we might never have imagined. This is actually the process I use as a songwriter. During this pandemic, as I've been emotionally touched, pulled, challenged, overwhelmed, saddened, heartbroken, raw, numb, and as many of you have said, there have been personal challenges. I could, I could do a whole webinar on overcoming personal challenges that I've faced during the pandemic, but I'm not going to take that time right now. But in essence, all of these experiences and all kinds of painful feelings have taken me very deep into my heart and amazing songs have emerged from them. So what I'd like to do is take us into another meditation. I invite you to close your eyes and get comfortable once again and take a few deep breaths. And as you inhale, letting your chest and belly fill with air. As you exhale, letting your chest and belly relax feeling the physical support of whatever supports you. If you're sitting, feeling the support of the chair for your shoulders and your arms and your back and the seat of the chair for your pelvis and tailbone and legs. And if you're standing or walking, feeling the ground under your feet. If you're sitting, feeling the floor under your feet. And as you inhale, letting your body be supported as you exhale, letting whatever supports you, support you. Letting yourself be comfortable and allowing your focus to be with your heart. Noticing where you feel your heart when I say the word heart. And if it helps to put your hand on your heart to help focus there, you're welcome to do so. Taking a moment to notice how your heart is feeling physically and emotionally. If it's full, if it's empty, if it's heavy, if it's light, 
if it's separate, connected. Take a moment to let yourself become a little more familiar with whatever's happening in your heart now. And take a moment to feel the grounding that comes with focusing on the connection between your tailbone and your chair, the floor or the ground and your feet. And as you inhale, allowing yourself to really feel that physical connection with the ground, for those who are sitting with your chair, with your tailbone, and noticing the space this grounded feeling creates for your breath and the space it creates to just be with whatever you're sensing and feeling in your body and heart right now in this moment. This kind of grounded body awareness and heart awareness helps create the crucible to become an embodied alchemist. So take a few moments to breathe into whatever you're sensing, thinking, and feeling, and letting yourself take what I call a body Xerox, a somatic imprint of whatever you're experiencing right now. Moving to an emotionally embodied, physically grounded space is something you can return to and refer to again and again. And it's a wonderful, way to take care of yourself when feeling through some of the challenging feelings and pain that come with pandemic living. So whenever you feel ready, very slowly and gently take a deep breath and bring your focus back into the room. And I'd love to hear some reflections on your experience. And I invite you to write into the chat right now, but I'd like to take like one or two people just to speak so we hear a voice or two, but please do write into the chat if you have something to share about your experience. And I appreciate that Maya and Richard have written in the chat right now. So would one or two people like to just reflect on the meditation and you can type me in before like Robin instructed you to do and if one or two people do, I'll call on you to speak and please beyond that, do write into the chat. Thank you for people that are writing into the chat. Robin wrote, my heart feels light. Oh boy, it's coming so fast. It's harder to keep up with it. But thank you for everyone who's writing into the chat. Let's have Emily share. Okay, Emily. Hello, thank you for being here. I loved your music earlier. Thank you. It really hit me because I'm an artist too. Um, I've been noticing lately, not just from this, but from like paying more attention to my body that my heartbeats have gotten louder in my ears when I just am sleeping or like resting or something. There's like really pounding <laughs> um but my heart today just feels really light really open and I've been doing this thing with my roommates where we send heart light to each other with sound effects <laughs> mm -hmm. um but Thanks. yeah thank you so much this is wonderful thank you Emily thank you you're welcome Thank you. And thank you for everyone who's writing into the chat as well. I wanted to talk about evoking and channeling our creative energy. And it's great that you're an artist, Emily, too. Um, there may be other artists here, too. Um, in school and our, in our culture overall, creativity is not overtly valued. And we often don't learn to identify ourselves as creative. In fact, for many of us, it's like, it's, it, I know for me, it took most of my life to embrace the reality that writing music was my primary voice, even though I started doing it before I could talk. Um, we often tell ourselves that I'm not creative, I can't draw, I can't sing, I'm not an artist. When creative energy lives inside all of us, 
And creative energy also lives inside all of our hearts. I know for me, I write from the heart. I'm also a photographer and I draw and I paint. It's always from the heart. I have a dear friend, Lydia Scher, who's a, a, an artist and teaches art. And her whole thing is about painting from the heart. So if you take some paint and paint from the heart or some crayons and draw from the heart or just exercise your voice and sing from the heart or take any instrument and play from the heart, even cook and cook from the heart, which many people are doing during the pandemic or journal from the heart, which hopefully you're having a chance to do during this Zoom call, you're opening a pathway towards creative expression and emotional alchemy. Creative energy channeled in a heartfelt direction is healing. And when we feel deeply into our hearts and source our creative medium with our pain, we have the opportunity to transform that pain into gold. I invite you to reflect on what kind of creative pathway already attracts you or might attract you. And it could be what gets called typical art like writing or drawing or singing or music or playing an instrument. But it also can be cooking, which to me is just as much of an art or rearranging your home or painting your walls or <laughs> rearranging the stones in your garden. You know, there are many, many forms of art. And what's important is to see what creative pathway might call to you. So I invite you to make a few notes in your journal about creative pathways that call to you and also to make some notes on something painful or challenging from this pandemic time that you might like to work with and transform through whatever creative pathway you might wish to explore. So just take a few moments to make some notes for yourself. And you're always welcome to make notes in the chat as well. I appreciate everyone who's been making the notes in the chat. So just looking at what creative pathways attract you or might be interesting if you haven't tried them and a challenge or painful experience you've experienced during the pandemic that you might wish to transform in some creative way. And it's great to see the different creative pathways that you're posting in the chat too, whether it's cooking, work projects, singing, gardening, reading poetry, turning it, turning to it for daily inspiration, collages, writing a TV pilot, that's cool. Ooh, Johanna, that is cool. That's really cool, yeah, mm. absolutely. And I invite you just to take a moment to close your eyes and take a couple deep breaths. And as you inhale, letting your chest and belly fill with air. As you exhale, letting your chest and belly relax, feeling the physical support of your seat for those who are sitting, of the ground, of the wall, whatever supports you. and feeling the support for those who are sitting for your back, for your shoulders, for your pelvis, for your tailbone, for your legs, and for everyone, whether you're standing or sitting for your feet. And just taking a few moments to let yourself be physically supported and allow your focus to be with your heart. If it helps to put your hand on your heart, I invite you to do so. And just taking a few deep breaths, breathing energy into your body, into your heart, breathing your energy all the way down through your tailbone and your legs into the feet, into the ground. And just inviting your breath to open and enliven your creative pathway, your embodied emotional creative pathway. So that as you feel whatever is hard, is painful, is challenging, you breathe new life energy into it through your breath, through your heart, through your feeling of connection and groundedness. And with this breath, let this moment be a seed that is planted to source, to fuel, to grow. 
whatever might germinate in your creative process. The seeds of creativity, healing, transformation, whatever might grow. And just taking a few deep breaths to fuel, to source, to nourish that creative pathway within you, opening up the possibility for healing, for creative expression, for balance during an uncertain time. And whenever you feel ready, I invite you to take a deep breath and bring your focus back into the room and you're welcome to post anything you'd like to reflect in the chat. I'm gonna go back to the piano because I have another song since we're moving towards the end of our time here. Well, before you play, Linda, can we see if anybody wants to share? Well, I'll invite anybody to share <laughs> since we do have time. All right, let's hear from Maya. Hi. Um, Linda, hello, we're taking, we're taking a share because we have some time for that. Yeah, hi. Can you, hi, Robin. Yes. Hi, Linda. Hi, everybody. Hi, Maya. Um, hi. I've, I've made masks on and off for years, and it's always been a complicated relationship to how they reveal and they hide. Um, and to their role in, in shamanic work. And I feel quite kind of dazed and overwhelmed by seeing all the masks around me because it, for me, it's, it's hard for everybody. And for me, it's like hits on an even deeper level because of that being one of my primary art forms. So since it start, the pandemic started, I've been wondering and wondering and wondering like, what is this about these masks? And I, I thought maybe I'd be inspired to create like a lotus mask or something, but I wasn't. I was actually turned off. I didn't want anything to do with them. But now I'm coming around to some urge, some longing to make a mask that's about plastic um, and that uses mostly plastic. And somehow if I could work with what you're saying, Linda, about really accessing my heart and this deep feeling I have that the coronavirus is on some significant level about love gone wrong, about love having turned inside out on itself. I don't know if there's any scientific way to prove that, but emotionally that's a feeling that comes up for me over and over and somehow combine that with the plastic, then I'll have a lot of power going on in that mass, but I have to overcome some kind of intense resistance that I think is in part fear and pain to even get the mask going. So you know, working on that with you this morning and praying that I can sort of find the magical stream of energy to, to burn that paper up with the prism, to, to, to burn myself out in a good way, to let the fire in me ignite again. Yeah. That's beautiful, Maya. That's really beautiful. And actually, um, some of my artist friends have been talking about, you know, how is society going to be different when we come through this? And a lot of, you know, sadly, a lot of businesses won't be here. Music venues are struggling. There's a wonderful woman who runs a place called Designer Clothing Circus, um, which has designer, they're like an investment bank for, for clothing designers. And they have extraordinary clothing that you can't find anywhere else at amazing prices. And they're not sure if they're gonna survive. But, you know, a whole question is when all is said and done, what will we create? You know, there's a lot of incubation going on and there's a lot of opportunity to rethink how do we love? What do we create from love? So I really appreciate what you said, Maya. Thank you so much. And thank you for whoever replies. I'm gonna put my email on the chat in case somebody wants to talk further with me about this. Um, and I think this whole thing of reaching for our creativity as, a, as an expression and a release and a transformation is awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Robin, my phone doesn't have a clock on it. Do we have time for another person to speak before I do something that will take about five minutes? We do. Good. So let's hear from someone else. All right, Denise.
Um, I actually feel somewhat encouraged, I guess, despite all this trauma, and I think we're all going through a lot of trauma, probably trauma we won't really realize until we're maybe a little bit more out of it. I thought that was a great exercise to write down everything that's changed in 2020. I'm going to keep doing that because I've come up with eight things and I, you know, you're just in survival mode. So you're, you're just trying to get through the day, but it is kind of astounding, big shifts. But I want to say that I feel like, um, constriction is the mother of creativity. And if anything comes out of this, um, it'll be even a greater focus on con conductivity, how we're connected to each other and how we can connect even when we're forced to be apart from each other. And, you know, in the business world, it's through Zoom and all these video conferences, but I've, I've seen and experienced in my own life people doing it personally, being way more open and way more, uh, if enlightenment is the definition, if the definition of enlightenment is your realization that you are connected to everything and everything is connected to you, then, um, then I think people are becoming more enlightened by leaps and bounds this year. And I just want to say that, um, uh, yes, I think it is very hard uh, for, you know, music venues and businesses and things like that, but uh, but we are being forced to really strengthen our conductivity to each other. And I think that's one of the positive things that will come out of this. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Denise. Thanks. Yeah, and, and one of the things that's, that's really inspiring is all the ways we found to work with what we have. For example, um, I would have never in a million years done a live stream, you know, every single Sunday night since like March 4th or whenever it was at this upright piano on my phone. Never in a million years would I've done that, you know, and I have, and there, there are actually thousands of people that watch it all over the world. There are now people who watch it every single Sunday, including from Australia, you know, and there are also gatherings of musicians and um, playing virtual songwriter circles or open mics. And I know some people from the United States that now play in Israel or England on their open mic because they've connected through this time. So there are many examples of transformational ways to, to establish and maintain the connectivity. And I believe some of the relationships we've made in these new ways will actually continue on when the pandemic is over. And even a, an example from my own life, I, for five and a half years, ran a house concert series out of my home in Waltham called The Music Salon, which people loved. It had all this momentum and energy. It had regular people coming, new people coming. And we'd start with a potluck dinner. There'd be a featured visual artist or, or spoken word artist. And then I would do an opening set and there'd be some sort of featured musical act of any genre you can imagine. And it was so wonderful and nourishing. Well, that stopped. February was my last one. But I started something called the Music Salon Live on the Music Salon group page on Facebook. And I would have a lineup where six people would each play 30 minutes for a different kind of show. And as soon as I put it out, 75 musicians wanted to play. And I think I produced like nine or 10 of them. And so suddenly there's all this energy. And now they don't have to be able to commute to Waltham. They could be in Australia and play. They could be anywhere and play. So the lineup of the house concert is all over the country and sometimes international and people can watch from anywhere. So that's just one small example of the expansive possibility of taking something that existed in a brick and mortar form and transforming it into something in this pandemic context. Yes. So all right. We're ready for your music. Okay. So I would, I'm going to close with another one of the songs I wrote during the pandemic. I just wanted to know that as the pandemic unfolded, I actually found a way to complete both of my 2020 albums, working virtually with my wonderful sound engineer. The Piano was released in October to Stellar Reviews, and Songs at the Heart of Life was released on my birthday, November 25th, and I know that's going to get Stellar Reviews, and a creative way to adapt it was working with strings, with banjo, with violin, with cello, with bass, with guitar, one vocal harmony, because we were able to record those virtually. But um, I'm going to share now a song that I wrote in mid-April when a dear friend of mine, who's another singer, his name is Bob DeChico, went into the ICU with severe COVID. He was on a ventilator for four weeks and it wasn't clear he was going to make it, but he has an incredible will to live and spirit. So he made it through those four weeks, then was in the hospital for another three weeks 
um, with double pneumonia, a blood clot coming off the feeding tube, and then went into rehab for 100 days before he could go home. He's still recovering, but I consider him one of the heroes of the pandemic, and I wrote this song for him. This was a case where I was devastated when I learned about him going in with severe COVID, and the song was what I did to transmute my own pain and to try to create something for others. And it's become what people call an anthem of the pandemic. I close every single one of my live streams with it. So it felt appropriate to do it today. And it's called Prayers. And if you know anybody who is fighting COVID right now, if your life has been touched by the loss of someone with COVID, to honor all the people on the front lines from doctors and nurses and medical people to Amazon drivers and supermarket folks, Please send up a prayer with the song Prayers. Oops, and I better put it in front of me if I'm going to play it too. Let's bring the power of our heart to ourselves and everyone in our lives. I really appreciate your taking some time with, to share with all of us and to share with me this morning and to let me share. And may you take more and more time to become familiar with the literal power of your heart, to develop your capacity as an emotional alchemist, to harness your creative power for your own well-being and the greater good of all. Every Sunday at 7.30 on my own Facebook page, Linda Marks, I have a series. My live stream is called Songs from the Heart Meditations for the Heart. And I always do a meditation along some theme that arises during the week that's topical. And on Tuesday nights at 8 o'clock, tonight is one of them, I do a live stream for half an hour on the, uh, the Apolyptic Open Mic platform on Facebook. The, the Sunday night one is an hour. 
So thank you, Robin, for the opportunity to share. And I really appreciate what you've shared. And I'll read the rest of the comments when I'm not at my phone so I can read them. <laughs> thank you so much, Linda. That last song was so touching. It's like really beautiful. Can feel your heart and the heart energy coming through it so strongly, you know? That's what strikes me the most. Well, thank you for what you brought here. And thank you to everybody for what you brought. So that everybody comes with their with their hearts and opens in this space. And it's so touching and so beautiful. I'm really grateful. Um, so thank you. I'll be sending the recording out later. Linda, if there's anything you want me to include, just send me an email in terms of those links that you just talked about. It's nice to see them in writing. So send them over. Glad you're feeling hopeful, Steve. That's a wonderful way to close this morning. Um, yeah, so I'll see you guys next week. We have Gregory Murphy coming to do some um, uh, element breath, which I really love actually, and uh, also a heart meditation that he's been practicing and is gonna share with us. So that'll be really nice. And uh, yeah, more lined up for the month of December. So I wish you all a beautiful day take all these blessings with you. And I love the really honestly, like planting the seeds of, of um, the pain and the things that have been hard and seeing how they can sprout into creative expression and, and love. That's why we're here. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Mwah. Thank you, folks, and have a good week. Thanks, Matt. Lots of love.